What a pleasure to be back in Canton, Mississippi, in my SSI, SSI PPI. I didn't feel smart till I could spell Mississippi. And my family's from here, from, from this state. Uh, my mother uh, grew up around uh, Green, uh, Greenville, and, and of course, some of y'all never heard of this, Swift Town, Mississippi. You ever heard of Swift Town, Mississippi? Well, that's, where my, that's where my mother uh, come, come up in. So I'm really family, okay? And um, I brought my beautiful wife, stand up, baby. Give Felicia a great big God bless you. Last time y'all seen me, I was single. <laughs> now I was married. And I am happily married. She's really been a friend of our family for over 15 years. And, and she's just been a blessing to our church. And then, man, the Lord never dreamed she'd be my wife. But the Lord blessed me with a brand new, beautiful wife. Glory to God. And um, amen. Uh, so praise God for uh, everything that's going on. How many thank God for Pastor Clayton and Pastor Katie? Give them a great big God bless you. Let me tell you something. This is one of the most gifted and humble men I've ever encountered. And he loves God with a fervency, and he's a tremendously obedient man of God. He will do anything God tells him to do, so y'all better watch out. He is, he is sold out to God, but one more time, let's put our hands together and honor the angel of the house, Clayton Roberts. God bless you, Pastor. I love you, and of course, Big Papa Roberts. Give him a great big God bless you, and Mama Roberts, I love you. I just love you. See, she's done fed me so many good meals over the years. She just, she's got my heart. Amen. But we are so glad to be here. Um, the, there is a word from the Lord today for you. If you go with me to Philippians chapter number four. Philippians chapter number four. Thank God for this amazing church that has stood the test of time. Amen. This church has stood the test of time, and God has ordained this house. He has ordained this house. Glory to God. The Lord instructed me yesterday to talk to you about the spiritual force of joy. The spiritual force of joy. Joy is a force force that we have access to by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say that with me. Say joy is a force I have access to by the Holy Spirit. Now this force also is inside of you and it is active, but you have to release it. Amen. And I, one of the reasons I'm standing before you today is I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to encourage you on how to release your joy and get it activated in your life. It's active in you because the Holy Spirit is in you. But God wants that joy to be activated in your life. In other words, you don't have to have another depressed moment in your life. Amen. Amen. And joy is not to be confused with happiness. Happiness is based on circumstances. But joy is based on the word and the promise of God. Amen. Amen. And joy, once again, is a spiritual force. Joy can get jobs done. The Bible even says that the joy of the Lord is your what? Is your strength. And I want to begin reading at Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse number 1. It says, therefore, my beloved, I'm sorry, therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Be united and joyful. I implore. Erodiah 
and I implore Sinke to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, keep these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and rest in my fellow workers and uh, the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Now, let me give you some insight. Joy is important because it gives you the capacity to receive from God easier. How many know when your, your, your attitude is good, your aptitude is better? When your attitude is good, your altitude is better. You can fly high if your attitude is right. And joy is more than an attitude. Joy, once again, is a spiritual force. Say joy, joy. is a spiritual force. Amen. So he says, whose names are in the book of life. This is one of the main things we need to be joyful of, especially in these last days, is that your name has been written in the book of life. Some folk thank God for their money. Some folk thank God for their car. Some folk thank God for their house. I thank God that I'm going to heaven. Amen. How many thank God you're glad you ain't going to hell? Come on. It's too hot. Does it get hot here in Mississippi? How many know hell? We can't go to hell. Come on, somebody. It's just too hot. But I'm glad about heaven. Did you know that your name is written in the book of life? If you've accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your name has been written in the book of life. Somebody say, God knows my name. God has taken note of your acceptance of him. And he is going to bring you in to glory for all eternity but it began when he put your name in that book of life. Amen. Somebody say, my name is in the book. And a revelation of eternity will give us joy. Even though it's in our spirits by the Holy Spirit. But to actively walk in that joy, we need to have a eternal mindset. Amen. To actively walk in joy, you need to have, on a continual basis, an eternal mindset. This means that you're aware that the day will come that the church is going to be raptured. Amen? There's going to be a seven-year tribulation on this earth. Then there's going to be a thousand-year millennium. Amen? Amen? But then there's going to be eternity where we're going to be forever with the Lord. And not only are you going to be in heaven, it's going to be a whole nother level of joy. But that joy, you have access to it right now. Amen. Now, let's go back to Philippians chapter four. And it says, uh, let, me, let me give you some perspective here. Take a moment. Take a moment every day, believers, to think about reward day. Now, for the world, it's going to be judgment day. For us, it's going to be reward day. Every day for the rest of your life, I want you at the beginning of your day to take a few moments and think about eternity. How God is going to take care of you for eternity. And you're going to have a whole trough full of uh, fun in heaven. Somebody say a whole trough. Yeah. Oklahoma, we say bucket, but I mean a trough, a big, y'all know if you, a trough. If you, you know about the farm, you know what a trough is. But heaven is a place of joy. Heaven is a place of of joyfulness but God never intended for us just to be joyful when we cross over it's time to be joyful right now 
because you need a lot of strength right now. Say that with me. Say the joy Joy. of the Lord Lord. is my strength. strength. Physical might can come if you'll tap over into joy. And sometimes you just got to be joyful on purpose. When you feel depression or negative emotions or emotional pain, mental pain begin to creep up on you, you need to say, Father God, I ask you for those resources of joy that are in me by the Holy Spirit. And you will notice a difference in a few moments on your inner disposition. God is ever so aware of the spiritual climate that's going on inside of you. Your thought life is really important to God. Your thought life is so important to God, believers. And he wants you to be free in your thought life. And you can't enjoy the joy in your spirit if you're always giving in to the sadness in your thought life, the disappointment in your thought life, the frustration in your thought life. You are literally the sanctuary of God. Uh Uh-oh, that didn't go over very well. You the temple of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Amen. Say, I'm the sanctuary of God, and I'm I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. And train your thoughts to be congruent and in alignment with God's words, with God's thoughts. Because that is the secret to joy being strong in your emotions and not just your spirit. God wants joy to be strong in your emotions and in your thought life, not just in your spirit, man. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now. So take a moment to think about Judgment Day or your reward day every day. Think about reward day every day. And this will help us have an eternal perspective. An eternal perspective will help us begin to walk in a greater degree of joy. And guess what? You're going to have a greater degree, degree of strength. Right? All right. Number two, think about heaven sometimes. Like we say in Oklahoma, y'all. Think about heaven, y'all. Don't just think about earth. Earth is at the maximum 120 years, but heaven is throughout all eternity. Man, think about your mansion sometimes. Amen. Think about the loved ones you're going to be reconnected to when you get there. Think about heaven sometimes. One of the most great things you can do is go through scriptures on 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 heaven and read them. It's beautiful. Now, nobody's not trying to sign you up to go to heaven right now. (laughs) But but it's healthy spiritually to think about heaven. Amen. I'm not trying to go yet, Lord. But I won't think about it because I want to have an eternal perspective. Amen. All right. Number three. Think about your eternal assignment. Whatever God has given to you to do right now, guess what? You'll be doing it in heaven. When your gifts have been given to you by God, it's not just for earth. Now, if I had time to teach it, I would teach you, but there is... He says he's hidden treasure in these earthen vessels. And God wired you a certain way for a reason. And let me tell you something. I'm just give you a little bit. Heaven is, is a utopia. Heaven is an oasis. Heaven is perfect. But heaven is also a city. And it's organized. And God needs your gift in the millennium, and he needs your gift in eternity. 
And I ain't going to charge you nothing for that one right there. <laughs> Somebody say, God gave me a gift for a reason. And it's an eternal reason. Give Jesus a hand praise for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. But this is what the scripture says, believers, in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Are you sure, God? Rejoice in the Lord always. In other words, God says, I want your attitude to always be to where I can bless you. I don't want your attitude to be determined by your circumstances. Okay, we all need to go to the altar on that. Lord, help, help our attitudes, Lord. Our attitude towards our brother and our sister, our attitude towards the Lord is so important. Amen? And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. Some of us got a permanent wrinkle between our two eyebrows because we're worrying all the time. <laughs> Don't let what happens to you affect what happens in you. You are a sanctuary to, for God. You are his temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And God's ever so aware of your thought life. The scripture says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. If the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, the mind must be the wick. And we as believers need to begin to shift our thought life. You have over 70,000 thoughts a day. 70,000 thoughts a day. Are you with me today? How many of your 70,000 are positive? How many of your 70,000 thoughts are God thoughts? How many of your 70,000 thoughts are refreshing spiritual thoughts? How many of your 70,000 thoughts are worship thoughts? Are praise thoughts? Amen. The health in our bodies will respond to the flood of thoughts that we create and allow to stay in our mind. And God wants to bring you into that emotional health, and then he can bring you into a greater degree of physical health. Amen, y'all. So my thought life is important. So he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And watch what he says. Again, I say what? Rejoice. This means all the time in every way. One of the uh, biblical uh, de definitions for rejoice is to jump up and spin about wildly. <laughs> every so often, you ought to find a way to spin around. Come on. And be rejoice. Be, and rejoice. And be happy on purpose. Amen, y'all? All right. This is a choice to activate a spiritual force it keeps us in the receiving zone from God. Say that with me. Say joy, joy. Keeps, me keeps me in the receiving zone. How many football fans we got in here? Did raise your hand if you're a football fan. How many know you cannot make, you, not, you can't score a touchdown on the 10-yard line? You got to score in the end zone, Correct. Joy is the receiving zone when God is releasing and imparting answered prayer. Joy is the uh, spirit of expectancy in full bloom. Let me say it again. Joy is the spirit of expectancy. Expectancy is really hope in clarity. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things, what? 
hope for, when you translate that and you read that and study that word out, it means earnestly expected. Now faith is, now faith is the substance or the main ingredient. That's what that word substance means. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, things that are earnestly expected. And the evidence of things not seen. So, joy is hope in full bloom. And you can receive from God when you give him an environment of expectancy in your spirit. How many know that God loves faith? It says, without faith, it's impossible to give him pleasure, to please him. He's pleased when you have faith. He's pleased when you have expectancy. Bishop, what's expectancy? Expectancy is when, you know, if, 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 if somebody says, well, I'm going to call you on Thursday. And I ain't called, they ain't called all Thursday. And you're kind of walking around, you know, waiting for, you're looking at your phone. When is this phone? Why? Because they said they was going to call you on Thursday, and they ain't called you yet on Thursday, but you expecting a phone call on Thursday. Expectancy is when you're looking for something earnestly. Bible hope, Bible expectancy is an earnest expectation of things desired. You ever had a barbecue, and you had a little dog somewhere, and everybody's got barbecue on the on their mouth and everything, and that dog, they just, that dog just waiting for somebody to ask, ask them to drop one of them bones. That's expectation right there. That dog is, he's like, man, will somebody just throw me a bone? That's expectation. If, and and, and uh, I remember one time, I don't remember uh, where I was, but I, I needed some money. It was years ago, and I just was desperate. And I prayed. I said, now, Lord, you got to give me some money. I, I, think, I think I need $20, something needed $20. I was driving down the road, and every green leaf that blew across the road, I slowed <laughs> way down. If you ask God for $20 and you don't slow down on none of the leaves that blow across the road, you ain't got no expectation. <laughs> Expectancy produces behavior that's in consistency with what you want to happen. Well, how does the Bible describe Faith without works, that word works is translated, faith without corresponding actions. There's, these are actions that are in correspondence with what you believe in your heart. And God can't resist a person who's got expectation. Amen? Amen. And so joy is the environment of miracles because expectation is the atmosphere for miracles. Amen? And if we can continue to maintain an atmosphere for miracles, anything can happen in your life. But if you ain't expecting it, how you specking on God to do it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, if you ain't inspecting nothing, how you specking on God to do anything? <laughs> I'm going to teach y'all how to talk country if it's the last thing I do. How you, somebody, somebody said, I already got it down pat. How do you expect for God to do something for you if you're not expecting it? And joy is the environment God loves to move in. The Bible says, let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. He says, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Almost done here. It says this. Um, in other words, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice all the time in every way. Rejoice. This is a choice to activate a spiritual force. It keeps us in the receiving zone from God. Say joy keeps me in the receiving zone 
from my heavenly father. Amen. If you want to change your emotions, shift over into thanksgiving because thanksgiving is the spiritual force that predicates joy. If you want, Lord, Lord, how do I stay in joy? Stay thankful. Man, when the devil got you up against the wall, start rattling off the things you're thankful about. Boy, that devil will back up off of you every time. If you're thankful, the devil don't want to talk to you. <laughs> the devil loves talking to people that ain't thankful. Are y'all with me today? Oh, that devil, he loves the company of folk that's complaining and ain't grateful. But you mess around and get grateful, devil walk right on out, leave you alone. He won't nothing to do with you. Because you have created an environment for the move of God in your life through thanksgiving. Amen. Thanksgiving is what we lean back on whenever we find ourselves running out of joy. Amen. And sometimes you might have to write some things down that you that you need God uh, to help you with so you can be thankful for it. Just write down some things you're thankful for and then read them off. You run the devil off at the same time. And you know what? You'll attract angelic attention because now joy is flooding your spirit. Angels respond to believers who give scriptural commands from a heart of expectation. Amen. Angels respond to believers who give scriptural commands from a heart of joy. You got so many angels at your disposal, you don't even realize it. You got angels that's ready and willing to move if you'll just say what God said. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm having fun. Okay, almost done. So it is a choice to activate a spiritual force. It keeps us in the receiving f zone from God. If you want to change your emotions, shift over into thanksgiving. Let, and this is what the scripture says in verse 5. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is watching and he is coming. Say that when we say the Lord is watching and the Lord is coming. Amen. Verse six, be anxious for nothing or don't worry is what God is saying. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So thanksgiving is the perfect ingredient to mix in with your prayer request thanksgiving is the ingredient you put and you mix in with your prayer request because God's already been good to you hey man regardless of what's going wrong regardless of what's got you scratching your head He's been too good to you already for you to give up on God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. He's been too good to me. Amen. All right. Verse 7. And the peace of God. Ooh. Glory to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So our thanksgiving, our joyfulness, us giving time and attention to his promises and in his, in his word, It'll cause us to have the peace that passes understanding. I like to call it aggressive peace. That's another spiritual force 
the devil don't want nothing to do with you if you're walking around here with too much of that peace stuff. <laughs> he don't like it when you got peace. Glory to God. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, this means anybody that has, has any sense looks at you and says, they should not be that happy. <laughs> Amen. Will guard your hearts. This is your miracle factory. Say that when we say my heart, my spirit is the place miracles flow from. He says, guard your miracle factory, guard your heart and minds, the 70,000 thoughts, through Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. the Messiah, the anointed one. We know that we're safe in him. Now watch what the scripture says in verse 8. Finally, brethren, that's me and you, whatever things are true, med meditate on that, Right? Why do I, why did this first thing he said is meditate on what's true? Truth prospers the soul. Whatever things are noble or honorable, whatever things are just, whatever things are fair, mm -hmm. whatever things are pure. These are the things that we're supposed to be thinking about. Whatever things are pure, uh-huh. Whatever things are lovely, mm-hmm. Whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. These are the things that we have been asked of the Lord to think about so we can stay in the spiritual receiving zone of joy and our strength remains in, intact because the joy of the Lord is our what? The joy of the Lord is our what? The joy of the Lord is our what? Glory to God. Sorry, y'all. I got a little bit too excited right there. The joy of the Lord is your strength. But you got to stay in that joy, that joy zone. Because God wants you receiving more uh, 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 on a, uh, a strong receiving level this year than last year. Amen. Give God praise for that. Amen. What does it mean to meditate on? It means to soak in it. It means to think about it. It means to say it. It means to get lost in the goodness of the Lord over it. And the joy will dominate your thoughts and dominate your heart. Amen. You don't stop laughing because life stopped being fun. Life stopped being fun because you stopped laughing. Amen. You don't stop laughing because life stopped being fun. Right? Life stopped being fun because you stopped laughing. Your joy is a spiritual force that no thing in your life can resist. You can change anything in your life with some joy. Amen? Because you'll start walking different. You'll start talking different. You'll start acting different. You'll start being different. Why? Because you allow that force to be alive and active in your mind, body, and soul. Amen. Give God praise for it. Amen. Glory to God. Raise up both hands. And I want to minister to you just a second as it pertains to the joy of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we decree over the lives of your people the capacity and the greatest degree of joy in their life now in Jesus' name. You spirit of depression, I rebuke you. I bind you. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you in the blood of Jesus is against you. I decree over each person in this room a greater level of joy in Jesus' name. Lord, I declare that every spirit of suicide is brought down to the dirt right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, that you will flood the souls of your men and women with joy with this, from this day forward. And Father, right now we receive a spirit of joy and being sanctified by your Holy Spirit in Jesus mighty name and everybody that receives that say amen amen give God a praise for it hallelujah Lord we praise you we praise you for it in Jesus name amen amen Pastor Clayton give Pastor Clayton one more great big God bless you